Hi, I'm Peter Shelley. I'm an attorney with the Conservation Law Foundation, and I've been working for the past 30 years to protect marine resources in New England. All of you have been hearing a lot, no doubt, about codfish and about the recent decision to cut the amount of codfish that New England fishermen could catch by upwards of 80 percent and all the hardship that th those cuts would uh, bring to fishermen and fishing families. But there's also another story that isn't being told, and that's the story of Atlantic cod itself. This is the fish that was the first fishery in the United States. It's the fishery that supported this uh, industry for 300 years, and it's a fishery, as you can see from this chart, that is collapsing. On this axis is the amount of fish by weight, and on this axis is the timeline. From the early 80s uh, down to 1994, um, we have the collapse of Atlantic codfish from overfishing. People were killing more fish than the fish could produce. In fact, it got so bad we sued the government. And 1994 is when the first management plan after our lawsuit took effect. It had some impact. You can see a slight growth in the population. But then recently, uh, it has started to plummet again. And in fact, the last five years have been the lowest levels of cod ever observed in New England. Now, cod is one of the most desirable fish to catch right now because the prices are, have never been as high as they are. Um, how are the fishermen doing catching those fish that they're actually now currently allowed to catch? They're not doing very well at all. Um, on George's Bank, which is the offshore bank um, in New England that's been a historically important cod fishery, the fishermen are catching about 25%. They're only catching about a quarter of the cod they could catch, despite record high prices. On the Gulf of Maine cod, which are the inshore waters, they're catching somewhere around 45% of those fish. So this is what's being landed. These are the fish that the fishermen can't find. And the reason they can't find them is because they're not there. But as bad as this is, as urgent as the problem is, as devastating it would be if that line continued to completely collapse. There are some things we could do. It's not inevitable. First, stop fishing on cod. There are not enough codfish left. Every single cod left in the ocean is needed to reproduce and grow that cod stock back. Second, there are refuges that cod are in right now called closed areas. A closed area in the ocean would be a place where the fish are left undisturbed for a period of time that would allow them to grow, become larger, reproduce, and they are the future of this fishery. We have to not only keep the closed areas closed, but I think we should expand them. The managers, again responding to these very short-term relatively narrow economic interests of some fishermen want to open these areas back up. They want to let the fishermen go into these closed areas to catch all the fish that the closed area has been so carefully nurturing over the last 10 to 20 years. This would be a disaster. And for what? For a few fish? Third, we need to force the managers to act. And the only way that's going to happen is if they hear from more people who want to protect the cod than they hear from people who want to catch and kill the cod. And that's where you come in. There's a lot of noise coming from commercial fishermen. That's understandable. But we need to have a lot more comments coming in from people like you saying, stop fishing on codfish. Protect the closed areas. Don't let the boats back in those closed areas. And most importantly, rebuild Atlantic cod. We all are looking for a thriving New England, and we're going to only do that if we all stand together and force the right actions to be taken by the people who make decisions about our resources. I want to thank you for taking action on this alert, and uh, I hope to be able to update you in the future with some success.